Hi guys! Well, I thought we were done making masks for a good long time since we've all made about 500 or more. But it turns out that schools are now requiring specific types of masks for band students to be able to play their instruments. And uh, some of my friends have been asking me to make these, so I thought I would give you uh, some help with making this. The website that um, the pattern comes from didn't have any instructions at all, and the pattern was uh, quite a bit too small for actually fitting a uh, teen face. So uh, this is what we're making. I'm going to show you. So it looks like a regular pleated mask, and I have my adjustable ear loops on the sides. So I'm just going to put this on and hopefully you can still hear me. So we've got this fitted all around. The ear loops can be tightened if you need them to be. And I've got a little bit of a uh, wire, nose wire in there to keep that snug around the nose. And then what happens here is we have this overlap of fabric so that it can be opened and the mouthpiece of the instrument can be put inside. So this is what we're making today. I hope you enjoy. So what I have here is the fabric that I'm going to use and I have it folded over a few times so that I can get a couple of cuts out of it. You don't need to have it right on the fold for this one. We're just going to use flat cuts. So I have this folded over and I have my pattern here. So this is a bit different size from what was on the website. The website had a piece that was about four inches high and that just really isn't big enough to have the um, pleats come in on the side and to still cover the face enough. So this is seven inches high and then at the bottom, depending on the size for each person, you want about five and a half to six and a half inches. I tend to go around six inches. And then we've got this arch here to cut out. It's about two and a quarter by three quarter inch that really it, it's not it doesn't have to be specifically that um but this i found is a good amount to come in to still have an overlap which you'll see later we need an overlap of fabric in the middle for when it's not being used you still want coverage over the mouth to filter so i'm just going to place this on my fabric and i'm going to use my ruler you don't have to use the ruler to cut, but the straighter all of your cuts are, the cleaner your final mask is. But keep in mind that when you are sewing, you're going to um, clear up a few inconsistencies because each step of the way you are, um, you know, covering more and more curved or off edges so you can correct later. So I'm just going to cut this all out. Again, I'm not being super picky about it this time. As my daughter would say, I'm on the struggle bus, just hitting everything with my ruler here. Okay, now that I have my face square cut out, I'm just going to roughly cut out the angled part here. And I can do that with my rotary, depending on how many layers, you might want to just rock as you go around and let the paper crunch up so that you're not cutting through it. Again, that can be pretty rough because we're going to smooth it out when we're sewing. So you're going to need four pieces per mask because essentially what you're going to do is have your two layers like this, and they're going to overlap in the middle so that you have full coverage in the middle when the, the opening is not being used with the instrument and then the opening can be used to put the instrument mouthpiece through. 
All right, so first we're going to put these right sides together. And if you're smart enough ahead of time, you can cut your fabric with right sides together so that you don't have to switch it after. My fabric was already folded the other way, and of course, I am as lazy as can be. So, I'm doing that now. Okay, now what we're going to do here is sew all around the edge a quarter inch. And while we're doing that, we want to get our ear loops in on the side. And I prefer to use t-shirt yarn as always. This is pre-purchased, so it comes nice and thin. And you can tie it easily and resize it easily. So I want four pieces that are about six inches long. I can cut that right on my mat board because I've got the grid there. And again, this doesn't need to be exact, so you can just get yourself a bunch of pieces. And if you have to do a whole bunch at once, you can wrap this around a piece of cardboard that is three or four inches around so that after it's wrapped, when you cut down one side, you've got all of your pieces. All right, so let's move over to the sewing machine. Okay, so here we are with our piece of fabric and we're gonna look at the uh, side opposite our curve over here and we're going to put our ear loops in here as well but we want to leave an opening to be able to flip this so we're going to leave an opening about that wide maybe two inches or so so to have one current one concurrent uh, sewing line around the edge we'll start at one side of that opening and go all the way around and come back and stop at the other side of the opening so i'm just going to put this in my machine and start around here i'll put this in at the quarter inch seam line allowance and drop my needle i'm going to start with a little bit of reverse and move forward to the edge but right before the edge i actually want to get my ear loop in so we're gonna lift this up and put our ear loop in, leaving about at least a quarter inch allowance after the loop. And if you're guessing on this, as I always say, it's better to guess farther in than farther out because if you go too far out, you'll end up sewing along the edge of your ear loop and it won't flip properly. But if you're too far in, that's okay. You can just square out the corner when you flip it. And I'm going to go twice over my ear loop to secure it well. Stick the ear loop in there, turn, line up your fabric again. I hate using needles and pinning it, so I'm just going to rough that up. All the way to the one quarter point. Again, I'm just guessing. Sometimes when I start, it's not quite the quarter. Make sure that your ear loop is far enough out of the way here that you're not going to go over it when you come around your ear loop. So this is the part where you need to just finagle it a little bit as you're going around. So I'm going to start on a curve and just watch over here. You can't really watch here because of the curve, but watch where it is to the fabric and just slowly make your way around. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Now we're gonna head straight down to the corner. Make sure that your fabric hasn't shifted so much that you're gonna miss the bottom piece if you go too far. And this is the last corner where we want the ear loop. So I'm going to put this inside the fabric and just have this stick out a little bit right against the seam. Now I sometimes will take a little clip like this or whatever else you have just to be able to push this up right against that seam in the back there. I'm gonna go twice over it. And I'm gonna remember that I want to leave my opening here. So I will just go a little bit more and then back off. And then I can take this off. So we wanna clip corners with a quarter inch seam allowance. You don't really have that much bulk anyway, but still let's clip corners. And then we wanna clip 
along the curve. So starting from the corner, I want to do a lot of little clips because this is kind of a tight curve and it's going to get pulled uh, in order to open it to put the instrument mouthpiece through. We don't need any clips on the straight edge. The clips are just to help us flatten out that curve once we turn it inside out. Now we can turn it. And we want to get nice square corners. So if you have a tool to squish into the corner there, this is the time to use it. And you want to really get the corners on the curve too. You want that curve to look nice and sharp. Once we get all of our corners pushed out, then we're going to iron it. I've got my trusty little travel iron here. It fits right next to my sewing machine, so I don't have to go too far. And we're going to take the opening where we left it for turning and just smooth that out. Sometimes you have to roll it a little bit, try to get it as straight as possible with the rest of the seam and then iron that. And we're going to end up sewing over that so it gets closed up. Now I also sewed the other half, so I'm going to iron that one too. So in order to get a nose wire in here, we really only have the amount of overlap for uh, space in there. So our two pieces are going to overlap about two inches. So if you look down here, I've got the edge of one and the edge of the other will come over about two inches, which means that our nose wire really can only be about those two inches. If we had it longer and we just left this whole thing in, what would happen is you'd be over the nose and then you would only go along one cheek. So this isn't a typical um, length of nose wire that I like to have that would go over the nose and then down across both cheeks, but at least clipping over the nose will help. So I have these sticky back bendy pieces that are used like on um, the bags of coffee grounds and they're sticky so it helps set it in place before you sew it. So I'm just going to cut this piece the length that I need, about two inches. And there are wires on both sides of this. So if you don't have an older pair of scissors that you're not worried about um, ruining, you can use uh, wire clippers, but um, just, you know, an old pair of scissors will do. So what I'm going to do now is work this into one of my pieces. It doesn't matter if it's on the front piece or the back piece. The way these are made, they're pretty much reversible. So you could use two different fabrics on them. Um, but I'm just going to work that up into the corner there. This part's a little bit tricky. You just need to have some patience with it. So I'm going to peel off the back of my piece. And one of the advantages is I can just stick that to my finger and start working that in. So I'm going to push that in. And now I've, I'm turning it sideways this way so that it's not sticking to the fabric as I'm moving. It's kind of going along the sides as I pressurize that through. So I get that in there, I turn it sideways, and I just work with my other hand until I get it up into the corner. So I'm holding the top and bottom of this, and then I can just turn it sideways once I get it up there. And now I have that up in the corner. So you can see that there. And we're gonna end up sewing around that once we piece the two pieces together. So let's get our two pieces in line again. So on my board here, I can see that I've got the edge there and I'm gonna overlap the two inches and I'm gonna do the same thing at the top. And then I'm gonna use my clips. These are actually hair clips, but they work really well for this. So I'm just gonna hold that in place on the top and bottom. 
And now we're going to sew along both sides. Actually, you don't have to sew on the on these sides yet because we're going to sew over that after we do our pleats. So for now, let's just go along the top and the bottom. And then we're going to sew down the sides of each overlap until we get to the arched part. So let's get back to our sewing machine. Now I'm going to sew along the top side first, which is the side that has our nose wire in it. This side is a little bit more complicated than the other side, although still not too bad. So I'm going to get this into my machine right at the edge, drop my needle, and then I'm going to have something in hand to help push this through if I need to. Sometimes I'll just use a little clip like this just so that I can push it and in case it slips under, it's just the clip and not my finger. So we're going to top stitch along the edge. And as we get closer, I just want to make sure that my fabric is square on this edge here. So let's get all the way up to the point where we are hitting our second piece of fabric. You want to get a little bit over it and then turn and we're going to go down underneath the nose wire. So it's just a few stitches there. And then we're going to turn and now I can take my clip off and I can feel where my the end of my nose wire is. It's all the way down here. So I'm just going to go straight across. Until I, I can feel with my finger the edge of the fabric underneath. So I'm just going to I want to stop short of that because I actually want to go back up along that other fabric underneath. Now go very slowly here in case your nose wire is a little bit longer. I have found with this particular nose wire that it's actually okay if I sew over it. I just need to take my time. And my needle can handle it if I actually have to go through that. So I get up to the top edge and now I'm just going to finish out to the corner. Back stitch a little or you can do a locking stitch if your machine has that and pull that off. So here's what I have there. Okay, now I'm gonna do the bottom side. And it's the same story there. Get it in, drop my needle, push this along, and this time I can go straight through because I don't have any wire in there. Okay, so here's what I've got at the bottom, top stitched, and now our two pieces are connected together. Next, what we're going to do is sew down the seams to keep this as attached together as far down as possible so that when this gets pushed open, the top of the mask remains closed. So I'm going to put the edge of my top fabric at the edge of my needle. And I'm going to just sew down the edge, a top stitch. You should come pretty close to where the curve starts, but you don't have to come all the way down. And if you make the mask and you find that this is too tight in here, um, once it's on and once you're trying to get the instrument mouthpiece in there, you can stop a little bit short, but try to come as close as you can. And I'm going to do that along the bottom too. And actually, I didn't need to cut that off, but let's just start at the bottom. And again, on this end, I have my nose piece, so just be careful once you get up there. And then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing for the other open piece.
Now back stitch a little bit here. And now this time I won't cut it. I'll just push straight through to the other end and I'll go a little bit past where I need so that I can start with a back stitch. And then carry it out to the edge. And trim everything up and then we're going to go back to the iron so that we can iron our pleats in. Okay, so let's first iron our pleats. It'll make it a little bit easier to sew. And the way that I do this is the center, right in the center, I want to be the peak of one of my pleats. So I'm going to pinch that and pull it up along the center and just fold that down a bit. It doesn't need to be an exact amount. I know, it's driving you nuts, it's okay. And then we're gonna do a pleat on the bottom and a pleat on the top. So we're gonna just take a bit of fabric, pinch that again, and bring that down. And on the bottom, I tend to run out of room a little bit on the bottom, so my last pleat comes almost down to the bottom of the mask. I just eye this up. I don't measure the sides, but it's okay to go pretty narrow on the sides. That just means it's going to scoop up tighter under the chin. So I've got my pleats and I'm just going to now sew down along the side to hold all the pleats in place and then we're almost done. All right, so I've got my mask with pleats. I'm going to get everything as square as possible along the side. And then I'm just going to sew down that side. If you're having trouble getting over these bumps, uh, you can lighten up the tension on your presser foot. On my machine, I can open up the side here and there's a dial for the pressure. Uh, every machine is different. And same thing down the other side. It also helps if you have a quilting foot, which I probably do have somewhere, but I don't like changing my foot in and out, so I just deal with it on my regular presser foot. If I get to a point where it's not loading underneath the foot, sometimes I can raise the foot and just smooth it out. If you're worried about your fingers getting under there, you can use a clip like this. So it's bunching up. I can just open this up and use my clip to flatten it. All right. So the sewing part of our mask is complete. Now we're going to tie the ear loops and we are done. So when I tie my ear loops, I like to do a slip knot on both pieces so that it can be sized uh, in both directions. So I'm going to hold my base piece in my left hand and I'm going to wrap this one over my finger. So it's going to go over my finger, around, again over, and then I'm gonna pull my finger out to get that through. And now if I pull that, lengthen that, I just keep pushing until it's as close to the end of that string as possible. And the tighter you pull that, the tighter it is for sliding along the other piece. So if, if your ear loops start loosening up after a while, you can retighten that knot and they should hold better in place. So let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna flip it over, hold my base piece of yarn, go around my finger, around again, and then through the middle. And now I've got my end. I don't want too much extra there, so I'm just gonna pull the knot down until I get it where I need it. And now both of these will slide along the other piece of yarn. 
so this ear loop can be resized. I'm going to do that on the other side and then we are all done.